future actuary, what if on day one of your actuarial job or internship, you are just as productive with Excel as an experienced actuary? There are so many shortcuts in Excel that are bound to be useful in almost any actuarial role or stepping stone position for that matter. And fortunately for you, you are going to learn them all here in this video right now, instead of spending years and years of actuarial work learning them like I did. So let's jump to the computer. Okay, so no doubt this can be used in almost any actuarial project. The one I'm looking at right now is actually one of the projects from our actuary accelerator community. So in this one, you have to drag down a whole bunch of formulas. So right here, there's a formula in the cell. And if we look at what it's referencing, you can see the different cells right here that are being referenced by this formula. If I drag it down, however, I want it to be referencing those same cells, but because I've dragged it down, it's actually moving the reference cells down as well. So that's called a relative reference. And what that means is as you drag the formula down, the references within the cell also change too. They move relative to the cell that you're dragging down. So in this situation, you can actually do what we call absolute referencing. And that means that you want to keep the cells that are being referenced the same. So in this specific situation, I actually want all of these three on column B. I want those to stay the same, but I do want the value or the cell that is highlighted in red here to move as I drag the formula down. So what I can do is for all the colored ones that are not white and not red, I can put an absolute reference here. And that is done by putting dollar signs in front of the different references in the cell. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the B and then a dollar sign before the F. And that's gonna allow me to do an absolute reference for the B5 cell. I don't want to do it for D2, but I do want to do it here. And I do want to do it here and here and here. So when I press enter and I drag this formula down, you're going to see that the reference cells are actually staying the same, except for the one that's in red in column D. So that's what we want. One of the best shortcuts for this is just to use the F4 button because that automatically inputs the dollar signs beside each of the parts of the cell reference. You can definitely experiment with, there's a lot of different troubleshooting and stuff you might want to go through and practice on your own. I'll put a data, a sample data set right down below for you to go try that on your own. So in actuarial work, it's inevitable that there are going to be lots of complex formulas. And before you change any of those formulas, you want to make sure that the cells that you are changing are not going to be impacted in a way you weren't expecting. So in this example, you see that there's a formula on the screen. And if I wanted to change that, I would first wanna check if there are any cells that were referring to that cell, or if there were any cells within that formula that needed to be updated before I adjusted this formula. So in order to do that, what you can do is you, you can go to the formulas tab and go to the trace dependence or trace precedence right here. If you click that, it's going to tell you any cells that are dependent on this cell. So for example, the formula in this cell references this cell, that's why it's a dependent. If you are looking for any cells that actually are referenced by this cell, then you can look for the precedence. And it's going to point to all the different cells that this one needs. I also like using a keyboard shortcut here. You can do control square bracket and it highlights all the precedence and then control square bracket in the other direction will like closing bracket will actually highlight all the dependents. Yes, the dependents. Okay, I do have some really quick day-to-day -day shortcuts that you can use, but first I wanted to get to arrays. I did a whole video about this one that you can watch and I'll link it right up in the corner there. But this is one I've actually been using a lot lately because it really helps to speed up the calculations. So have a look at this workbook. Here is where I've used an array and you can tell because there's some curly brackets around it. And basically what this does is I'm kind of summing up based on different requirements. So I'm summing up column F 
based on different requirements from column A and column E. So in particular, if the month is of the right number, so July in this example, month seven, and the year is 2025, matching right here, then we also have to find instances where the description matches what I have here, and then it's gonna sum up all those instances from column F. This is so convenient. Okay, so now let's speed through some really quick things, things that you are probably gonna be using day to day in your actuarial work. Okay, so you don't have to start formulas with an equal sign. That seems to be the tendency, but you can actually start them with a plus or a minus sign if you wanted to even though that would be negating the first value in the formula, like I've just done there. Anyway, the reason that this can make work faster is because it's a lot easier for you to access the plus or the, yeah, the plus sign than it is the equal sign with your keypad. Also take note that if you highlight a whole bunch of cells, it's going to give you the sum and various different other factors, statistics that you might want to know at the bottom of the screen here. So you can easily find the values there and you can also customize this by right clicking and there's a whole bunch of different things that you can select that you might find useful depending on the specific projects that you're working on. If you ever find yourself wanting to select multiple different cells, you can do that by clicking on any cell, holding down the control button and then clicking on the other cells that you want to highlight and you'll be able to select multiple cells at once FYI, you can also do this for folders on your computer. So you could select this one, hold down the control button, this one, this one, this one, just in case you didn't know. Another thing you might find is that sometimes when you scroll down, you lose the values at the top, especially if you have a, a big table with lots of different data in it. So what you can do is you can actually go to the view, I'm already in there, and then you go to the freeze panes and go to freeze top row. What's that what that is going to do is allow you to scroll down, but it's going to keep your titles at the top of the top at the column. Now, this wouldn't be a video about shortcuts if I didn't talk about some common keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time in actuarial work. So one of them is just control C for copy, control V for paste, um, control shift V, and that would paste only values. I also often use control Z if I want to go back from something that I did. So like undo, it's basically equivalent to this right here. And I think it's V uh, control Y that helps you go for, or allows you to go forward. Control X will let you cut something. And then again, you can paste it there directly. In Excel, I often use control shift down to highlight a whole bunch of different cells in a column. You can also do control shift right to do a whole bunch in a row. If you don't want to highlight them or select them and you just want to go to that, go to that cell at the end, then you can just do control uh, right and it'll take you there. Just don't press the shift. Control S will save your work. PSA, Excel auto saving is a big lie. It's never able to find anything after it auto crashes every single time you're trying to do more than one thing at a time. So control S obsessively. And if you ever need to hyperlink something like add some sort of link, you can always do control K and it'll bring up this and then you can put in the URL, like the internet URL that you want to put in here. And you can also select other links or projects, workbooks that you might wanna to link to as well. Obviously there's control F as well. There's the replace option that I use quite a lot where you can actually use a wildcard function or a feature, I guess. So you see this star that actually can act as a wild card. So if you are trying to find, let's say on this page, I have reporting, period. Maybe if I, for some reason, didn't know if there was going to be the ING or not, I could just replace it with the star asterisk, and then it would be able to find wherever I have this and the, the asterisk would represent the ING or even if I had reported period or report period, it would still be able to catch all those. So I can find next, it's finding all these. Um, right here and then I can also replace based on that so if I for some reason found this and I just wanted to make all of the instances consistent I could change it to just reporting period and re and change all instances of report 
period, reported period, reporting period, all to just reporting period by using the replace all feature. Okay, so now for a few odds and ends that you are going to thank me for once you get into some data that is just not in the format you wish it was. So there is the text to column features. Basically, this is going to allow you to take some text. So you're copying from a PDF. Maybe, for example, I've just pasted these numbers in. I thought they were going to go into the separate columns, but they didn't. They just all went into this one cell. So very similarly, this is all just one. What I could do here is I could use the text to column feature and it would allow me to use some sort of character to differentiate where you want each of the different pieces of the text to go. So I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to use the space as my delimiter. And that means that wherever there's a space in here, that's where it's going to separate into the different columns. So as you can see right here, this is how it's going to break it down. And I want it to place it in, let's go with cell A2 starting with it. And then you press finish. What it's done is it, put, it has put those into each of the different columns. Similarly, I could do something like this, text to column, next, 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 and then finish. And it's a lot more common for this to happen with numbers like this than you would think. Now let's talk about removing duplicates. Duplicates right at the very end here. These three cells have duplicates in them, or meaning the same thing in them. So what I can do is I could highlight all of these. And of course there was a, for a keyboard shortcut I could use for that but I can paste them here and use the transpose feature. So now they're in a column rather than a row. And then I'll use this remove duplicates button. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove any duplicates in the stuff that I've selected. So now what you can see is it has removed the two extra thank yous at the end. I could put this back and transpose it again and you're going to see it comes up like this. And even if there were multiple occurrences of different words, it remo would remove all those as well. It works for numbers too. Okay, date formatting is probably going to be the vein of your existence when you're doing actuarial work. Dates are just the worst. But fortunately, you can customize them with Excel quite a bit. So not only can you go here and go to more number formats, and then you have different date options here, but you can truly customize it in any way you want by going to the customize button here. And they have some various ones that you can select, but you don't even have to select one of those. What you can do is set it up in any way that you need it right here. So let's say for some reason you needed it in a format where it was month, date, date, slash year, year. So meaning you only want it to show the first number of the month you want it to show the day the two version two number version of the day and you want it to show the two number version of the year it could transport it into exactly what you need like that okay so practicing each of these individual things on their own is great but what really matters is if you can combine them with other excel formulas and functionalities and that's what's really the difficult part about learning excel is combining them all together but honestly that is the level of sophistication that actuarial recruiters are going to want and expect from you. So if you want real actuarial types and styles of work to practice these things, well then you can check out our Etched Actuarial Excel and VBA course where you're able to get six actuarial based projects plus full solutions and a whole course on Excel from beginner to advanced as well. Not only are you going to learn how to do all this stuff and practice real actuarial work, but you can add these projects to your resume as well. So many of our members have been able to add them and they would became major talking points during interviews. So what I recommend is that you add a whole section on your resume dedicated to technical projects and include these projects that you do in the course in that section, it's going to help demonstrate your technical skills and prove them to employers, which is so important if you wanna get noticed. All right, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.